unique perspective China on where Baldwin. black students were during May 4th, 1970, and provide clarity on the importance of including the Black Lives Matter movement into today's commemorative efforts. My expansion upon this angle of thinking is by no means an avenue to distract nor negate the lives taken during these events, but to rather offer empathy on a genre of tragedy so prevalent in the black community. My speech is entitled, We Still Have Time. Though we cannot compare pain, taking the time to honestly and openly have a dialogue about our different experiences with law enforcement paves the way for empathy and understanding. Having a safe place to explain one's hurt, be consoled, and then supported by the community are all basic needs and wants that should be afforded to people of all races, backgrounds, religion, gender, social class, and ages. The reality is this. We live in a world where the very people sworn to protect us have proven time and time again to be the very means of our demise. That is what this conversation is about. Some victims of May 4th were students, brothers, sons, and friends, just as Tamir Rice, all people first and foremost. The black narrative is an alternative exception where not only do we lose our children, but we are not afforded the same grieving time because we are busy explaining our pain, justifying our hurt, and defending our struggles. The truth is, no one asks why May 4th is commemorated. There is no discussion about whether the students deserve to be, to be killed because the fact that young lives were taken at the hands of law enforcement is enough. Yet black lives are not afforded that same luxury. This perspective is not meant to be taken as a black versus white conversation, but rather a battle against humanity and all that, is, that we are as a nation claim to stand for. This is an opportunity of growth and reflection for those on all sides of the table. But let it be clear that some of the outright ignorance and hate speech displayed on social media leading up to this momentous event was sickening. The mere mention of members of the black community taking part in a conversation so relevant to our experience caused people to cancel their alumni memberships, threaten the safety of students, and completely disregard the correlation between May 4th and Tamir Rice's death, shooting for fear, the death of a shooting, for fear of recognizing a bigger issue at hand. This past week, people on social media had not the slightest problems expressing their views on the Black Lives Matter movement, Tamir Rice herself, and black students on campus. They neglected to even for a second acknowledge the correlation, nor offer it the same respect we offer the events that we are here to honor today and the anniversary of those tragedies. So to the unwilling to even participate in the police brutality conversation, as long as black people are involved, you will hear our story. You will no longer be afforded the comfortability of hiding behind your privilege. Save your white supremacist tears, suppress your racist views, and embody your integration as a melanin privilege. Restructure the disgrace you feel when a fully competent, relevant black woman comes to educate you on police brutality. Come to terms with the reality that black students weren't shot because black United students protected its people by urging them inside. Empathize with the hard truth that even though we as a people escaped death May 4th, 1970, we did not May 14th, 1970. Nor did we on February 26, 2012, November 26, 2014, or July 13, 2015. Why? because the average person doesn't recognize these dates in the first place. Because the very same people so easily slandering a woman's name, disregarding the death of a child, and idolizing that child's killer are the people that we deal with every day. There will, no, there will be no progress without the humility of understanding our realities. So understand that these people just described are closer than you think. These are the students that touch our hair like a young child at a petting zoo. These are the teachers that would rather give us an easy nickname than take the time to recognize our names given at birth. These are the faculty that send them to funding black cultural programs because they don't see its importance. These are the community members shutting down their businesses for fear of too many black people gathering together. This kind of hate doesn't begin and end on social media, nor does it subside at the end of a 9 to 5 shift. It does not cease at the call of 911, and it certainly doesn't stop at the pull of a trigger. Yet coming to terms with these passive aggressive institutionalized forms of racism is a reality that many of us have adopted as being a part of our black experience. So yes, we do know pain. If you are neutral in situations of injustice, it is true that you have chosen the side of the oppressor. But what does this really mean? It means that humanity as a whole loses because we fail to learn from our past mistakes. Pain is not had without opportunity for something new to be born, and that's what we have right now, opportunity. What we choose to do our pain with our pain is up to us. We can choose the path of humility, education, and cooperation, or we can choose a long road of competition, debates, and discourse, because we can all agree that tragedy is not the answer. Though this opportunity we are now faced with is one that stems from hurt, misunderstanding, and violence, I'd like to offer some encouragement. 
we still have time. The message we send to people all around the world can change. We still have time to offer hope instead of hate, compassion instead of complaints, and peace instead of pain. I guarantee you, if you ask any parent that has lost a child, they would give anything in the world to have more time. How much time we have left is up for discussion, up for discussion. But in moments like these, where we here, where we are here right now, is where change occurs. Thank you.